Hey, good morning, more Medic One. Today I have a uh, steel BR420 Magnum on the bench, and the complaint is that it's leaking oil uh, on the starter over here and the uh, the backing plate when the operator is using it. Uh, he's complaining of the uh, uh, oil getting on his back and actually causing it to stain up his clothes, and it's actually pretty hot. Uh, one of the reasons a two-cycle uh, engines actually leak oil is due to the seals will go bad and uh, the two-stroke mix that you put in there, especially if it's a little bit rich. I don't know if you can see it or not, but that mixture in that tank right there looks a little rich to me. But anyway, that's nevertheless, um, if the seals leak and if the mixture is a little rich, and it doesn't burn off and you know it burns all the gasoline away and there's always going to be a little bit of residual oil left down in the bottom of the crankcase on these two-stroke engines when it puddles up and when the piston comes down it forces that little bit of oil out of there hence makes the engine not only run bad but will it'll also uh, leak oil as I stated a while ago we're going to do a leak down test. Um, I'm going to show you how to do that and we're going to pinpoint where this is leaking. We're not just going to guess. We're going to test. Go ahead and grab your 27 uh, T27 wrench and go ahead and remove the starter. Access to see what's going on here. Oh wow, look at there. So once I got the starter off, it's actually leaking pretty good now. Can you see that? Let me see if I can zoom in on that for you. I suspect a, uh, a crank seal, but uh, we're going to go ahead and do a leak test anyway to see what's going on. Go ahead and start removing the air filter and air filter base. Basically we want to get to the uh, carburetor so we can put our adapter plate in there. Inspect your air filter. Go ahead and remove the air filter base. Now that we have the carburetor off, we can just uh, leave it kind of laying off to the side there what you need is a rubber block off like this I actually made that and then the adapter here to block off the carburetor you'll reuse the screws that you took the carburetor off with you'll run those back through here with your adapter Actually, I got it backwards. Run the bolts through your spacers first. Then the adapter, or the block off. Then your rubbers, like this. And then screw it back on the engine. It 
take your T27 and just tighten them up. You don't have to be real tight. You don't want to break anything. A lot of people ask, has asked me, uh, more medic, where do you get your uh, special tools from? And I've said in the past that uh, I've got this leak tester from Echo, and if you can see that the part number is 91006. Uh, if you'll Google that, excuse me, if you'll Google that part number, uh, it should be uh, in the system. Uh, this is the old number, the new number. I don't remember what it is, but you can go to my Amazon uh, store, and I have one listed there for sale. It's not cheap, but uh, you can go there and look at it. I'll go ahead and I'll post a link in the description below. Uh, the next step you want to do is uh, loosen, loosen up the muffler. You don't want to take it all the way off. Just loosen it up. Batteries in my little snap-on screwdriver are getting weak. Take your little wedge that comes with your kit and we're going to shove it down in here to block off the uh, exhaust port. What we're going to do now is we're going to, like, uh, like I said, we're going to put our block off here. We're going to screw in our adapter for the spark plug and then we're going to pump this thing up. I've pumped it two or three times already. I'm not getting it's not holding any pressure so now what we're going to do is get us a little soapy water bottle and we're going to spray we're going to spray the seals we're going to spray make sure it's leaking not leaking air and not leaking where you put your adapters now let's pump it up and see where the bubbles come out see that It has a cylinder gasket that's leaking. This is the gasket that seals the jug to the crankcase. However, we're going to go ahead and tear this thing down. And uh, I'm going to do a complete reseal job on it. And I'm going to take you along with me. Go ahead and remove the fuel tank assembly and the carburetor. It's just on the very bottom of the machine. It's just four bolts. We can get another battery right quick. Much better. You don't have to remove the gas tank, but it just makes it easier. As an assembly, everything won't, you know, it won't leak on you when you take it all apart. Go ahead and set the unit back up straight and remove the carver, uh, muffler. Inspect it, make sure it's not warped, cracked, gaskets are good, remove the heat dam. Now let's go ahead and remove the four jug bolts, cylinder bolts. Okay, we 
we should be able to just slide this cylinder up now. As you can tell, look at there. That gasket is just actually disintegrated and it's broken. Ain't that something? Go ahead and knock all your screws out. Keep these with the jug because they are a different length. But uh, let's go ahead. And, yeah, man, that gasket is just brittle hard. Inspect your piston. I'm going to take you off the tripod here in just a second. Oops, didn't mean to bump the camera there. Check this out. It's a lot of hours on this machine. And that piston is in pristine shape. Hardly any scoring. Look at the top. Real good shape. This is just an awesome, awesome machine. I wanted to cry whenever they quit building it. But anyway, thanks a lot, Steel, for discontinuing a good unit but anyway what in the world was that Stephanie she put my blower up over there and it fell on the ground I'm gonna have to give her a spanking let's go ahead and get this thing tore all the way down and I'm gonna replace both the crank seal the PTO seal and the flywheel seal and the gasket that goes around so this is gonna be a pretty good job but y'all just bear with me well basically to remove the engine we are going to have to uh, remove the blower fan assembly and so basically we're going to uh, take a rag and we're going to wrap this piston for now to keep it from getting damaged like that. That should be good enough. Let's just go ahead and get this thing twisted around here. And there's three bolts that hold this backing plate on. And there, one of them is hidden here and the other ones are hidden right behind this flap right here. So let's go ahead and get it undone. Excuse my big fat head. One right down here. Make sure you can see that. Barely. Let me adjust the camera just a little bit. Sorry for that. Get you in focus here. All right. If this was home and garden television, <laughs> it'd be a whole lot different kind of editing, I'm sure. But this is real life, folks. One more right here. but the fan assembly left there all right now we need to go to work on this let's go ahead and start removing all the fan bolts you a little small screwdriver and pry this cap up right here. Sometimes these are on here pretty good. If you destroy this cap getting it off, don't fret. They're only like 90 cents from the steel dealer. Or you can go to Home Depot and just get a PVC cap to put on it with a little glue and it'll work just fine. But I wouldn't recommend that because you got to take it apart one day. All that cap is for, this is actually a fitting 
for a, another tube assembly so you could hook up like a mosquito fogger. Go ahead and remove the outer fan portion. And as you can tell, we have, there is the fan. Let's go ahead and remove the fan now. Put your screws back through the fan as these are different lengths. Set it off to the side. Now, we're getting down to the meat and potatoes of this job. Here are your engine mounting bolts. There's one, two, three, four, five, six of them. Go ahead and remove all of them. I'm also going to keep these separated. Now our short block assembly should be pretty much free there. I'm going to go ahead and remove the throttle cable and ignition module from the engine. That way I don't have to wrestle with these uh, wires and stuff. Let's go ahead and remove those. cable. Lift everything out as an assembly. Like that. And your short block is now free. Go ahead and remove the flywheel. And Hold the piston so it doesn't rock around on one of the main bosses here. Just give it a tap with a brass hammer. And it'll pop right off of there. Don't lose your flywheel key right here. Because you will need it. The next step you're going to do are we're going to actually take this. And I'm just going to clean this up real good before we go any further. So I don't get any dirt down in the motor things like that. Basically next what we want to do we want to split this crankcase in half to be able to replace the crank or the, uh, the crankcase seals. Hold the piston so it doesn't flop around and there's three screws that hold it on. It's right here. Now, what you want to do is we need to remove, well, we may not have to, uh, very gently screw on one of your bolts that hold the flywheel on. Take a brass hammer and we're going to try to ease this crankshaft out of one side of this crankcase. And it will be a little tough because it's been on there for a while. But just keep working at it and it will finally pop loose. Once you get the crankcase broken in half, it'll just slide right up off of the crankshaft there. And here's one of your seals that we'll be replacing. Go ahead and unwrap your piston. And as you can tell, here's the other gasket that we will be replacing as well. This gasket was probably okay, but I'm just going to cover my butt and we're going to replace it. Here it is here. Just chunk it, it's trash now. Um, let's go ahead and finish removing the crankshaft uh, completely all the way through. Again, basically the same scenario. We're going to thread on the nut. And let's just give it a couple taps. Let me 
she is out of there, folks. I have not found any other better way to get the crankshaft out of one of these. Um, if you use a press, you have a chance of bending or warping something. But uh, as you can tell, the bearing stayed in this side. That's totally fine. Uh, just make sure it's not rough, and uh, that way we have a a way to dig out the old seal and put the new one in. Put this in a safe place so it doesn't get dirty, gritty. Check your bearings, make sure they're not gritty and rough. I'm just gonna wrap the whole thing in a clean towel. Yes, this is a clean towel. My wife washed it last night. So no dust at all. Let's go ahead and pop out all the old seals here. One there, and then there's one here. And just use an old screwdriver or a pick. Just uh, tap in your seals until they're flush with the bo their mating bosses. I like to use the blunt end of a uh, an old socket <clears throat> and work it work it around the edges just a little bit at a time. And the socket will actually stop, so it keeps you from pushing the seal to down too far. Hear the change in tone. Wipe any excess aviation gasket sealer away from there. As you can tell, the gasket is seated flush against the bearing race. Make sure it's free and it's not touching the gasket's not touching the bearing. The next step, we'll uh, reinstall the crankshaft and the seal here. Go ahead and tap down your crankshaft ever so gently. A little bit of oil on the crankshaft helps. I'm not hitting this hard. I mean, I'm not just beating the crap out of it. I'm tapping it. You'll hear the change in tone here in just a second. there. Once you look at the tolerances of the uh, counterweights on the crankshaft compared to the, the crankcase, it's just thousands of an inch is how close that runs in there. Um, for a lot of times a crank bearing will go out and it'll let it shift, you know, a thousands either way and it'll sound like a rod knocking. Well, it's actually the counterbalance hitting this crankcase over here and I've actually seen it bad enough to where it it'll knock a chunk out but uh, go ahead and get your new gasket set it in place and it'll only go one way it'll just like that right there but let's go ahead and put a put us a dab of uh, aviation gasket maker on both sides Go ahead and get it set down over it like that. And then we'll uh, get the other crankshaft or the other crankcase half put on here in just a second. Like that. Careful not to damage the seal when you go on with it. Take you a socket and hit right in the center here down over that seal and just give it a couple taps. Go ahead and slide your uh, crankcase or cylinder jug gasket, excuse me, on. Again, I'm going to go ahead and use just a little bit of the aviation gasket maker sealer. Careful not to get any of this on the piston. Just slide it over the piston 
you do get a little bit on there that's okay you can just wipe it off slide it down over there like so and just kind of just you know get it halfway lined up because we're going to have to uh, get this cylinder jug on here in just a minute and uh, we'll tighten it on down once you get the jug slid down over the piston rings let's just go ahead and uh, cinch all the bolts down pretty much to go back together uh, we're going to mount it on the fan shroud over here and uh, basically it's the assembly is the reverse of disassembly so I'm going to walk through this pretty quick and uh, we'll see how it runs here in just a few minutes go ahead and get your blower uh, halves put back together be sure not to cross thread any of these because you actually are going into plastic. But there's one, two, three, and you just go all the way around and tighten them all back up. And don't forget to put your cap back on. We'll get this mounted back on the back plate and reinstall the gas tank. I've got the gas tank and the engine mounted back on the blower shroud or the blower housing and before I button all this thing back together I always like to redo my leakage test and uh, I've got all my stuff hooked back up let me zoom in here on the gauge I'm sure you can see it I'll zoom in as best I can pardon the move, moving of the camera and uh, we're going to pump this thing up <clears throat> to about 10 psi and depending on the size of the crankcase it may take several pumps oops i've got it on vacuum let's go ahead and pump it up as you can tell every time i pump it it's moving and there's 10. you want that to stay steady for a good while um, if it don't start moving within you know a minute or so not the whole gauge the needle <laughs> but uh, I believe it'll stay right there for a good long while I consider this engine now ready to be put back in service uh, it's not leaking with pressure let's do a vacuum test Let's pull about 20 inches of mercury vacuum and it may not allow it. The gate, I mean the, the, there we go. Now you may have a little bit of residual pressure left in there and let the gauge stabilize and it is holding good. You may have a little bit of seepage, of course, you know, like, uh, where your block off plate is here and your muffler adapter oh, I want to show you that it's basically just a wedge triangular wedge that shoves down in between the muffler and the exhaust port but uh, you can make it out of a inner old inner tube you can make it out of uh, an old rubber mat but let's just check it again here it's still holding Get you in focus 
and I'm gonna let the pressure off of it and uh, we'll get it put back together and running here shortly go ahead and reinstall your cover and starter If y'all like these full length featured videos like this instead of me doing them in like two parts, just let me know. Or if you like longer videos that you don't have to wait, leave a comment below. Uh, we'll do a cold start here in just a minute. Still a little cold start. Put it on. Ignition. fast, give it a choke, off choke after it popped off, it's good to go if you have any questions about steel equipment BR420 Magnums let me know more medic one have a great weekend